Our topic tonight is Democracy Makes Unions Strong. Uh, we're featuring members of Local 814, Teamsters at Sotheby's, and also CWA 1101 Rebuilders at Verizon. Uh, so without further ado, I'll, I'll bring up uh, Dave. Let Julian do this part. Okay. okay. How you doing? Uh, my name is Julian. Uh, how you guys doing? Uh, I've been an art handler at, at, at Sotheby's for about six years. I've been in the there for six years with the Teamsters Union. Um, our union is mostly uh, commercial moving companies, new furniture, distribution companies, office furniture, and we have a handful of art handlers, and that's where Dave and I come out of the, the two auction houses in the city, Sotheby's and Christie's, and we work for Sotheby's. <coughs> and, um, I guess you know we've been we've been we've been privileged we've been lucky to be in the media quite a bit uh, um, thanks to a lot of you know supporters from Occupy Wall Street thanks to a lot of the you know the courageous fight back of of our of our coworkers the people that we work with because we've been locked out now for uh, we were just looking on a calendar it's almost it's almost it's going to be five months soon um, that we've been out out, out on the street. Um, and just to give a little backstory, just so people, you know, if you haven't heard everything about our lockout, basically, um, well, a little bit of the backstory and a little bit of the reason that I think our struggle has has become a real flashpoint for what's going on <coughs> in in, uh, in Occupy Wall Street. It's really sort of, uh, I think, to a lot of people, it it really it really registered as like this is this, the type of corporate greed. The type of reckless kind of you know practices by corporations that Occupy Wall Street you know organized around in the first place. So I think a lot of people saw what was going on at Sotheby's, what was going on with us, and said, "Yeah, this is exactly the specific example of the larger stuff that we were you know criticizing at, at, you know at, at OWS." So the company made uh, over six hundred and ninety million dollars in profit last year, um, and there's only forty two art handlers at Sotheby's, and. For whatever reason, I think there's a few very ideological people at Sotheby's and Sotheby's management who decided, for whatever reason, they decided that uh, maybe because you know they would take advantage of the anti-union climate in this country, they thought that we were a weak union, we're a small union with not a lot of resources. For whatever reason, they picked this year where they didn't need concessions at all, right? Because they made $690 million, right? They made a ton of money. It was actually on record as their second best year in the history of the company. Right, and the company goes back so long that you know they were auctioning off people before they were auctioning off paintings. I mean, that's how old we're talking seventeen forty something, right? So they got a, they got a proud history over there, right? So in any case, um, it's like so 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 they didn't need the concessions, right? But they 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 brought in Jackson Lewis. Some some folks who are union members might have heard of Jackson Lewis. It's like one of the most notorious anti-worker law firms in the country, and they hired Jackson Lewis. Uh, Jackson Lewis basically rewrote our entire collective bargaining agreement, made over 80 <coughs> changes to it, um, stuff that included like no more seniority for overtime, um, the, the right to completely terminate our retirement funding altogether so we wouldn't have any more retirement, um, uh, what amounted to like a 10% cut in wages by taking away our overtime and taking away like a half hour out of the work week, four hours out of the, out of, four hours out of the work week, half hour out of the work day. Um, that's just a few you know, the, uh, the right to completely terminate our trucking operation that employs people as truck drivers and truck helpers. So, and that's just a few on a long 80 plus list of uglies that they came to the table and said, this is your new contract. We'd like you to ratify it, right? The words of our lawyer, or, sorry, not our lawyer, the words of the company's lawyer was, this is your new agreement, uh, live it, love it, learn it, right? So that's, so I mean, if you're talking about arrogant and <coughs> intransigent attitude at the bargaining table, the arrogant attitude of the 1% being totally disrespectful to the people that help make this company profitable. And not just this year, but that we've, you know, some of us have sacrificed 20, you know, Dave's worked there 20 years. We work with people that have worked there 40 years. Um, so a lot of our guys have contributed to making this company successful. And yeah, so there's been a real shift in the culture of management at the company, and they came in this year, and they decided they like they were really going to go to war with us. Um, so this is not a traditional, you know, quote unquote traditional labor struggle where we're talking about, you know, we want a 10% cost of living, and they want to give us a 3%, or you know, yada yada. This is actually about the existence of the union itself. Uh, one of the the I didn't even mention. How could I forget the 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 sort of the biggest demand that they have is that they no longer want to have to hire 
union art handlers ever again, period. Right? They're saying from now on, when somebody quits, gets fired, retires, we're going to replace them with a low wage temp who makes $15 an hour, who doesn't have health care, who doesn't have a retirement, who doesn't have collective bargaining rights. So that's their vision for the future that maybe a couple people in Sotheby's management and Jackson Lewis dreamt up.